Hey folks, what's up? Don't get to do many of these chats with you. Uh, I kind of get an idea for something I'd like to talk about and then I sort of, I don't know, just lose my mojo on it. But I uh, thought tonight we would talk a little bit about on car stuff, we would talk about um, how to keep from wasting money when you have something wrong with your car or your car's not running right or it's doing something kind of weird and it's not going to be something that I can show you like out in the garage by working on something. It's not that type of, I'm just kind of, this is sort of a uh, kind of a philosophical thing. It's kind of a way to, to get your thought process where it needs to be about diagnosing problems. And this is, you know, it's, it's a, uh, Understanding that not everybody is uh, mechanically inclined enough to stick their head under the hood and say, well, that's probably a fuel pump or a water pump or a carburetor or flooding or it's running lean or it's missing, but this might kind of help you, you know, kind of just sort of think it out a little bit before you just like act on something or spend money on something or do something like that because... A lot of those don't have a lot of money, and you don't need to be you know, taking guesses at things. And that's where I want to talk a lot about. And I'm not going to talk a lot, hopefully, but that's where I want to start. I used to be on automotive forums. Excuse my chair creaking, sorry about that. This chair is only a year old, and it's already making that kind of noise. But because I'm a fat ass, I guess. But uh, I used to be on forums a lot, automotive forums for like Mopar stuff and Mustang stuff and all this and I kind of got away from it because uh, I kind of got burned out because I was just, you know, answering the same kind of questions all the time. There's a lot of people asking about how to, what could this be, what could that be and answer them and answer them and just on and on and on, you know, and I just, I got kind of disillusioned with it. I thought, well, you know, are these people learning anything? Or they just, they want somebody to tell them what they want to hear, you know? So I kind of stopped, and then I realized that at some point I was asking the questions that I myself would ask were more than a lot of people can answer on there. I try to, you know, ask in-depth questions that I never got a reply to them. And just one person might just, they start doing what I call boilerplate stuff. They just like, you know, I heard it someplace else they repeat blah blah. So that's that. So I used to, you know, I got through a lot of that. So it just made me realize a lot of people, when they're trying to figure out how to, especially on an older car or truck or something like that, they're trying to figure something out, they take guesses at stuff. And that's the worst thing you can do when you're trying to uh, fix something. And people do it on newer stuff too. You know, if you have a car that's misfiring or you have a car that's uh, just not running right, you know, I hear a lot of this same sentence starts out with, I'm thinking that it could be, um, that's what they say, I'm thinking that it could be. You're not thinking. When you say I'm thinking, you need to take the word thinking out of that and say I'm guessing at it. I'm guessing it could be a spark plug. I'm guessing it could be plug wires. I'm guessing it could be the distributor cap. I'm guessing, I'm guessing, I'm guessing. I'm not thinking, you're not thinking because if you were thinking, you would go uh, start testing things and diagnosing things and you would know at some point with a little bit of work, a little bit of effort, what the problem is. Uh, you know, and the, the second thing past that you hear a whole lot by amateur mechanics, not mechanics, but amateur people that don't know about mechanics, the one thing past I'm thinking it could be is I heard it could be. That's the second thing you hear a lot, you get a lot of, is I heard it might be the starter. I heard it might be this. I heard it might be carburetor. I heard it might be the float. might be the plugs. It might be this. I heard this, heard that. And, I, you know, I laugh a little bit about it, but I always cringe, man, because I always hear somebody, it's always somebody, some unknown person that's the expert. I always, you're going to see some videos coming up about Phil, Uncle Phil, 
being here and we're kind of tinkering around stuff and I always, always get aggravated with Phil and get upset with him a little bit because he's always, he always turns to somebody. So it's not me, you know, I'm not the person that can fix the stuff for it in the right way. It's always somebody else, some unknown so-called expert, you know, whether it's on radios or it's on carburetors, it's on this or it's on radiators. You remember the video about where they destroyed his radiator, almost destroyed his radiator trying to fix it? Well, see, that was another one of these so-called redneck experts that didn't know what they were doing, but Phil thought they did. They told him they did. So you get a lot of that. It's always, I always tell people, turn to someone who it's proven if you need a question answer or you need advice or you need some work done, turn to somebody that knows what they're talking about, that's established that they know what they're talking about. You know, don't. You know, just because somebody said it might be that, that's the worst thing you can do. And I was, I watch a lot of South Main Auto's videos, just about every one of them, and that guy sets the bar as far as how to run a shop and how to find out what problems are. You know, because here's the thing about it, guys. Every problem has a cause, okay? Every problem has a cause. Something causes every problem that there is in a car. Or truck so there's no reason for you to he uses a term that everybody thought was hilarious he calls it triagnostics do you know what try you know what triagnostics are triagnostics are like if you have a 1991 Chevy pickup and it starts missing uh, triagnostics are okay well instead of me just trying to see if I have maybe taken my own meter and see if I have but bad plug wire I'm just going to go to the parts store and I'm going to spend all this money on a cap, rotor, plug wires, plugs, and, you know, I'm going to try that because it probably needs it. It's probably a little bit old. It probably needs it anyway. That's the number one justification is it probably needed it anyway, right? So what if you put all this stuff on there and it doesn't fix it? That's triagnostics. You tried it. You still didn't fix it because you didn't test. You didn't diagnose. That's what that guy does. That's what Eric O does. He, he has all this stuff at his disposal. So, you know, that's the type of stuff I warn people about. Don't do that. Don't do that. You need to find out if it's a 91 Chevy pickup, for example, and you got a bad miss in it, all of a sudden, it's, there's more things than just a spark plug or a spark plug wire that can cause a miss. You can have, you can have that. You can have a cam go flat. You can have a rock arm brake, you can have a valve burn, you can lose compression, you can lose valve operation, cam can lope and go away. So you can have all this stuff, but you know, you're you're guessing at it, you know. Triagnostics, don't do triagnostics. So, I always, like I said, I shudder about that. I, I feel like there's, you know, I've tried, to, I've tried on my YouTube channel, I've kind of run low on stuff to really do to kind of, it help educate people about things like this because we've done quarter jets, we've done time belts, we've done all this stuff. And since I try to be a diligent home mechanic and try to take care of my stuff, I don't, fortunately, I don't have much break around here to show you what happened. But uh, I, I try to, whenever I enter into some discussion about something, I always try to educate people. And I say, look, I said, you know, don't try stuff. Don't guess at it. Don't listen to somebody. You know, if you don't know what the hell you're doing, you don't know what you're talking about, you don't know what to do, that's not a problem. That's not a problem at all because, you know, you need to just confess that and concede and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know what I'm doing here. I need to talk to someone who knows what the heck they're doing, you know. Uh, you know, Phil had that really awful Buick LeSabre. Yeah, I think it was that one. Yeah. And uh, the one he got for free, which he sold. And he's, you know, he's he's trying to get it run right. And I kept, I told him like more than one time, you know, this is, I hate to say it, this is a redneck thing. This is what this is, you know, part of it. And I said to Phil, I said, Phil, I said, if you'll bring that car up, I'll take a look at it. We'll get it sorted out. 
you know, one way or another, we don't, we've got, I've got enough stuff to diagnose an engine, even being at home, a home mechanic, easily. And, you know, he agrees with me. He says, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do it, bud. I'll bring it up to you. Never did. The next thing I hear, he says he tries all this different stuff. He tried a map sensor. He tried coil packs. He tried spark plugs, plug wires, fuel pressure regulator, this, that, you know. Everybody, everything that would unbolt on the damn engine, he tried. It's a 3800. And you know what? After he did, he said, oh, but I did all this stuff and it didn't fix it. I don't know what to do now. You know what I did? I said, oh, well, you should have taken it to someone who knew what they were doing. You should have listened. It's what you should have done. So I didn't feel bad for him. I don't feel bad for anybody that does that because I'm just going to cut to the chase. It's a dumb thing to do. Guessing that car problems is dumb, you know. It just is. It's a waste of money, and that's, you know, we could get into a whole other discussion, which we're not going to, but we could get into a whole other huge discussion about why lots of times poor rednecks are poor rednecks. It's a whole thing about responsibility and managing money and doing things that are smart with your money and not wasting your money. We could get into all that. We're not going to, but that's part of that right there, you know. So, you know, if Phil's car got from me, he's already had some redneck mess with the radio on it. He didn't listen to me. He didn't listen to me. He chose not to. And screwed his radio up, and I didn't fix it. I didn't fix it. Because I gave him one of these things. This is a factory service manual. I gave him the appropriate one from Chrysler for his car, an 87 Grand Fury. This is the one to my 66 Chrysler here. And I love these things because they are invaluable. Uh, you can look in just, it's, essentially it's like they take a car and they totally take every last bit of it apart, picture by picture, piece by piece, and instruct you how to do the same if you need to. You can fix anything on those. And I have one of these for every car I have. Well, well, the one, the two, the, the two A bodies are sharing one because they're almost identical. But this one's got its own in his car. So he took this out of the car. He didn't leave it in there because he didn't want it to get messed up. I said, Phil. I said, they use these things in the, in the Chrysler garage on and on and on. You know, it's not a it's not a keepsake. But you need to have one of these. If you have an older car, like before about 1980 or 90, 85 or 90, you need to have one of these for whatever. They make them for all cars. I'm not talking about a Haynes manual. I'm sure as hell not talking about Chilton's manual. All, to, all that Chilton's and Haynes do is they take one of these and they pick out bits and pieces of it to put their manuals together. You ever wonder why their manuals are about half the thickness of these? So they put these together out of bits and pieces of that. They leave pertinent pieces out of it. They condense it. So it's only half as good as this one. It's like sodas at the fast food place. When you run a soda out of that machine, it's all fancy and it gives you all those buttons and you get all this and all that, blah, blah. That's what's all watered down. You're only getting about half sodas. So that's what these are like, the, the Haynes manual part of it. Spend the money and buy one of these. And that's another thing. People are cheapskates when they work on cars. You know, they get excited about going going to the parts store because that's exciting. Going to the parts store is exciting because we're buying some new things and we're going to have a big pile of new stuff right there. And that's going to fix it. It's going to run all better after that. So we're not going to worry that we're just maybe going to flush $70 down the toilet that we can't afford to spend. I don't worry about that because we're all excited about something new. It's new. You know, people, you're ever around people, and I'm telling you this from experience because I've worked in a parts store and I've worked in a retail environment every day of every week for the last 18, 19, 20 years. And people are enthused to the point of not being very responsible by the whole idea of something new. So that kind of plays into this. You know, it's like, well, the spark plugs aren't that old, but they probably need some new ones. Probably need some new ones. Need some new ones. Let's go to, how about some of these fancy iridium plugs or platinum? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, it's a thought process. So don't fall for this. 
Don't blow money on stuff until you know what the problem is. Like Eric, you know, South Main Auto, he runs his own business, and I, I kind of use that as an example. If you ran your own mechanic shop, how long do you think you would stay in business if you let your mechanics just guess at stuff? If you had a car come in and it was misfiring and or wasn't running right, you know, especially like an old, let's take an old car. If somebody brought a 1982 Dodge pickup in with a 318 and it wasn't running right and you had to diagnose it, how long do you think it would go you'd stay in business if you just told your mechanic, or you, you were the mechanic, you said, well, I'll just go buy all this crap and replace it. You wouldn't stay in business long. So you need to think that way. When you work on your own car, or you have a, a redneck authority, a redneck expert coming in from left field can try to work on it for you. You need to think about that. When they, if you took your car, if you had a 1970 Dodge Polara that wasn't running right, when you took it to the Dodge dealer, the Dodge dealer didn't guess at it. He, he diagnosed it by the book. So if you're a home, if you want to be a home mechanic, if you want to develop your home mechanic skills, your car mechanic skills, do a few things to help yourself and your wallet. Don't guess. Use the proper uh, sources of information. Don't listen to them. Don't guess. Don't say I'm thinking it could be. I mean, if you're thinking it could be, if you want to just try stuff, if you want to try stuff for your money, why don't you just go to the casino and just try the slot machine? You're doing the same thing. It's automotive gambling is what it is. So you know, don't do that stuff. You can be responsible. Try to develop, hone your skills and don't guess. Don't try things. I mean, you know, it's all right if you want to. If you got something that's going to cost you money, that's fine. You'll swap a carburetor. I do that all the time. But I'm just saying, if you, don't go buy parts that you don't need. Parts stores, you guys that do that crap, y'all are the ones keeping parts stores in business. They love to see you coming. They love for you to call them on the phone and say, how much is a stripper cap for a 1990 Chevy pickup? And the guy says, well, we got the standard. And then we got the gold. And then we got ultimate. You know, I've I got on people like on videos and stuff. On guys that's, he just had a little baby boy. Congratulations. But he knows who he is, but... Out there in Texas, you know, the Cadillac Ben, Corvette Ben, excuse me. And, uh, you know, I kind of got on to him. I said, you know, he's, he's getting frustrated about stuff. And when I said, you need to think this stuff out, you know. Don't get frustrated. And, you know, just, just uh, hone your own skills. Develop your own mechanical skills yourself. So anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning into this. I hope this is going to be watchable. It's sort of an opinion piece, but maybe it will be something to help you uh, think a little bit differently. And watch South Main Auto's channel because he's very good at what he does. And, you know, he he's real good about, you know, educating people not to guess at things, you know. Diagnose, 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 diagnose. And I understand that not most people don't have a fully equipped shop like that that costs a whole lot of money to equip for the things he's got. But as far as the home mechanic like you and I, if you want to turn into a better mechanic, better home mechanic, you know, you can get the basics pretty easily. I buy a lot of used tools, you know, I buy these used manuals. So try your hardest to be a good home mechanic and please please don't depend on you know who with his silly little three and four minute how to videos thanks guys we'll see you later bye now